Okay, Last of Us, we get it. You're super sad and you have voice acting and zombies. Bioshock, ooh, look at all these universes and plot lines. Who cares? Man, I'm tired of all these stupid highbrow games trying to muddle the gaming community with their so-called quality. By God, I need some action. So when I need a game that forgoes things like story, character, level design, and graphics, and focuses on just blowing up a bunch of stuff, I look no further than Earth Defense Force 2017. Earth Defense Force 2017 takes place in Japan where a mothership appears above Tokyo. It begins releasing thousands of alien ships containing giant ants. Yep, giant bugs. As a member of the EDF, you get to work mowing down wave after wave of these six-legged monsters, dodging pincers and acid, which apparently these ants can shoot out of their butts. Eventually, giant spiders join the mix, shooting huge strands of web everywhere and basically being as annoying as they are in real life. Soon you're blowing up UFOs whose pilots must be heavily intoxicated, dropships with the biggest weak spot of all time, and what Japanese series wouldn't be complete without a giant freaking robot. All of these guys and more, you get to shoot for hours on end, blowing up bugs and buildings alike with a wide array of weapons to choose from. Every time you play, enemies will drop weapons and health upgrades. The health upgrades are small, but they definitely accumulate over time. The weapons you get depend on how far you are and how hard the difficulty is. The farther and harder it is, the better the weapons. They range from simple things like assault rifles and shotguns to missile launchers that fire projectiles at about one mile per hour, exploding like a nuke when it finally hits its target two minutes later. There's infinite ammo in the game, so you can blast away for as long as you want with no consequences whatsoever, stopping periodically to reload. Using explosions is hazardous, both in that they can easily hit an obstacle in front of you and basically kill you, and also they completely kill the frame rate, which is already pretty poor. You basically play the majority of this game in slow motion while hoping your desperate dodge rolling is enough to get you out of the event horizon of this chaos. For me, however, annoying as it may have been, these frame rate issues just accentuated the preposterous amount of enemies on screen and the ridiculous destruction that was being spread across this very unfortunate city. I think I probably caused more collateral damage than the entire invading alien population put together. But that's besides the point. There are about 50 levels in the game, each playable on five different difficulties, ranging from very easy to inferno. There's no real plot or cutscenes to worry about, so you can just plow through all of the missions however you want. I tended to jump around on difficulties so that I could get better weapons and more health, because some levels were just really damn hard. The only thing that ever really changes is the enemy types, and even then it becomes how many different ways can they combine them, and how many different types, and how many can they throw at you. Some levels are a frantic battle for survival against a huge horde of enemies, some have a massive boss for you to defeat, but most are just short missions where you kill some things and it takes you to the next mission. There's a particular string of missions where you are constantly dealing with a giant four-legged robot, basically a scarab from Halo, but bigger. But you don't actually get to kill it for like 10 to 12 missions. It was annoying running around not knowing if I should try to kill it or just try to not die. The final boss does feel really epic though, mostly because you fight it at about 10 frames per second, and it was very satisfying the first time you beat any boss. Not knowing how much health they have could be annoying since you weren't always sure if you were shooting the right spot, but it definitely paid off in the end. The best part about this game is that good old couch co-op. You and a friend can fire up that split screen and take down giant bugs together. You share upgrades so there's no real competition, but it's also incredibly easy and tempting to shoot each other with rockets so beware of that messy road. If one person dies, however, he gets to sit there and watch his friend play the rest of the level alone to completion or death. There's no way to respawn, so getting screwed early on can make some missions really boring. But the non-stop action of this game, the hordes of enemies, and the huge bosses are all just that little bit better when you can share it with a friend. I've laughed a lot playing this game in co-op, mostly at the expense of the game's poor design, and it was always a blast. Now, a lot of my review has been riddled with sarcasm and snide remarks about the game's quality. In all seriousness, the game isn't that great. Like I said, there's no plot, characters, level design, and the game runs pretty poorly. Graphics are crappy even for its time, and despite this, it still can't handle the action of the game. There are a lot of enemy types for the first half of the game, but after that, they just increase the number you fight and add a boss here and there. On top of all that, besides playing every level and every difficulty, there's nothing else to do in this game. Despite all of this though, the game is just plain fun. Alone or with a friend, you get to have some mindless fun blowing up giant bugs with rocket launchers, 
shoot down UFOs, and wrestling with giant Godzilla monsters and massive robots. The game is geared towards simple-minded fun, and I think it definitely achieves this. It's not going to win any major awards anytime soon, and I doubt the series will ever climb above a 6 or a 7 in the reviews. But if you ever want to just pick up a game for an hour or two for some over-the-top, cheesy, Starship Trooper-level action, this game is definitely worth your time.